We're going to continue with part two. Actually, what we started yesterday that the heart is not a storage room. Do you remember what we spoke about yesterday? Nobody remembers. Yes. It means I was talking to the wolves. No. No. No, never. Okay. So what did I say? About how to communicate. <laughs> Wait, I have to look at my nose. <laughs> Sorry, Rabbi, I wasn't on yesterday. Otherwise... What, what? Oh, keeping information from your partner. Yesterday we dealt with a case that the daughter-in-law didn't know that the sister of the husband tonight getting engaged. They were planning to tell her in the last hour. Instead, she found it from somebody else. Her husband's cousin. Rabbi, right. the engagement party was yesterday, Rabbi. What, what? The engagement party was yesterday. Which engagement of... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. I got you, I got you. Okay, so now... <laughs> Yesterday I said, and now we're going to go back to the root of the problem. The communication, it's not easy for us, and you know why. Because we disrespect each other, we're too upset. When you're too upset, you cannot bring a message across. When you're too overwhelmed, you cannot bring a message across. You, you cannot. You have to calm down a little bit so you'll have some time to think what I'm going to say, how I'm going to say. Now, so I said yesterday that it's better to keep quiet for now. You go to the engagement, even though your stomach is turning upside down. And then tomorrow, you're gonna sit down with your, with your husband and you tell him who your feelings. Now, what happened? Sometimes you hurt and you're deciding, you know what, I'll keep it in the storage room. I'm saying just to keep it for a short while, it needs to be discussed. It must be discussed. But some, some, some ladies, I don't know why, they're deciding, you know what, she won't buy it, uh, this and that, and she is piling up in the storage room. She's piling up, piling up, and one day it will erupt like a champagne bottle with a big noise. And then, God forbid, he can bury the house. And this is not a good idea. So to every lady over here and to every man as well, I'm talking both sides, always. If something is bothering you, emotionally, you don't put it in the storage room. The heart is not a storage room. 
a day passed, maximum two days passed, I said, you know, I have to talk to you. Either it's 10 minutes, either it's 15, but we're going to discuss it. So soon enough, I'll say how to present the case which left the daughter-in-law out in the dark, how she will approach the husband in a right way so the message will get across. Now, what happened that the storage is already quite Packed. And you feel that your that your that your husband, I rather don't talk to him. He's busy with his phones, he's busy with this, and, uh, I'm looking for somebody to talk. What happened next? No. You end up talking to a friend or a parent or somebody else, but not the person themselves. Very good. Now she has a friend. I hope that she is not a divorced one because that's going to be the worst thing to do. And she starts to share with her her private life. And they start to compare husbands. My husband do this, my husband do this, my what your husband is not doing this. I'm telling you the worst mistake on earth, the worst. And now they it will take him few few hours to sit and to analyze why he's doing that, why he's doing that. Shame. And now, if this is not enough, they're getting into things that nobody should get there. It's uh, intimacy life. Why your friend have to... What you have to do with it? So now, all the people that have... Uh, they learning Shmirat Lashon, not to talk Lashon Ara. This is plain Lashon Ara. Plain. You're selling your husband to somebody else. Did you ask him? Or the man sitting, you know, it calls the lacking room. The lacking room talk. Men sitting down. My wife, she is a clafte. She is this, she is that. And this one says, ah, hello, your wife is good. You should see my wife. Ah. And they starting to talk and saying, it's plain Lashonara. Did you ask your partner, can I say all this on your behalf? Who gave you the permission to talk about him? Or to talk about her? So with no permission, you're going to sell your own husband or your own wife. So nice of you. So now, are you ready after what you said, what do you think? Your friend will keep her for herself? Next time she will have friends over for coffee, you're going to be the main one on the table for discussion. Did you tell her this? Did you tell her that? Why did you tell her this? Why did you tell her that? And everybody will come with his own opinion. I'm telling you, do you know how many times I saw it? 
And more than that, I'll tell you, this kind of thing will lead you to divorce. I was witness to few cases that this kind of things was leading to divorce. In the last moment, I was able to save it. Last moment, mamash. So, the outcome will not be good, not at all. Now, we have to say, we have to be fair, that sometimes is the fault of one of the partners because he is not ready to listen to what he or she had to say. So what the other partner should do, whom shall I talk to? I need to talk, I need to vent. The storage room is, is, full, is filled up already. When it hurts, you scream. You scream. It hurts. And a scream that's coming from pain, you cannot judge it. It hurts. Imagine a woman that she has a husband that is not ready to listen to what she has to say. Or the husband wants to speak to his wife and she says, okay, you're always complaining. I'm tired of you already. Why don't you listen? So now, many ladies that I know, they, they 10 pounds or 20 pounds overweight, not because what they eat. It was the store in the heart. It's too heavy. They need to take it out. When they leave my office, if they go on the scale, they're 10 pounds lighter. For sure, 10 pounds lighter. So, many times I hear that the complaint that each other have is it's a, le a legitimate one. But now my question will be, when I come down and I relax, you know, sometimes I sit over here for one hour and I hear Lashonara, Rechilut, my husband is like this, he's like that, he is mamash, like close uh, to mamash, a, a Nazi. That's the impression I get. At the end, I'm asking one question, and Pitom, you see the whole conversation take a turn. I said, can I ask you a question? Yes. Is your husband doing it intentionally, or he doesn't know what he's doing? If you're doing it intentionally, right away, I'll tell you, I'll give you a phone, a number, you call and take your get and get out of there. Your husband met is Russia, but 99.9, .9, the husband don't know how much he's hurting his wife. He doesn't know. They're not doing it intentionally. It's everything is lack of knowledge. So now, after I judge him to Kavzechut, 
What do you want? What do you want? You can tell me, maybe you can teach him. Maybe you can take him to the classes. Maybe you do this. Right? But to sit and to blame a person who don't know Can you blame me why, why I'm not in the shuttle going to the moon? No. Can you blame me? No. Why not? Because you're not trained in that area. But if I, I married you because I wanted you to go to the moon and this and this and that. But I don't know how. I don't know how. That's fine. Let me, ask, let me ask the man over here, but please be honest. Do you really understand what your wife wants from you? Men only answer. No. 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 Not all the time. No. no. Why you don't understand? They want us to fly, Rabbi, to fly. But every day is different. You want 15 different things a minute. It's hard to grasp. Okay. <laughs> They're very demanding. <laughs> what, what? Very demanding. Okay. Rabbi, look, she hurt. She came back. <laughs> It's good hearing. <laughs> I'm not here to defend myself. <laughs> Leave you cooking because enough uh, I'm cooking them. So you don't have to cook. No. So now every man will tell you, I don't know what she wants. I don't know what she wants from me. Yes or no? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Yes, Rabbi. Yes. But Rabbi, yeah. back to that whole conversation that we spoke about, the reading between the lines. Remember? So back to that. So men don't know how to read the dictionary between the lines. They have a dictionary with lines. If the dictionary says you never home, he understand I'm never home. You don't understand that today you came late and you never home. And the babies I bought from Costco because you never home. Again. In order to start to deal with the problem, we have to understand that the men don't have a clue. If this is the starting point, we can work. If you're gonna come and point a finger and say, you are shot, you this, you that, you this. I can't deal with this. Nobody will be able to do that. No husband is an angel. No wife is an angel. We're not angels. We're human beings. And everybody is entitled to make a mistake. We're entitled. But ladies have something that the men don't have. They need to pour everything out. Men, he can deal with that in the closet. A lady, she is not able to. She needs to empty out 
the storage room. And they write, and they write. They have to empty it out. And if the husband will not listen to her, then he calls that, that she has to talk to her friend, she has to talk to her parents, she has to talk to her sister. I don't know who, because you are not there to listen. And then every man has a, why are you making the dirty laundry outside? The dirty laundry should stay inside the house. But who shall I talk to? To the wall, you are wall. Now, many times, many times, the wife, very close to her mother, and she's saying everything to her, her mom. You can't have it worse than this. She's saying it to the father with the salt and pepper. And this man now, this is his daughter. And Mimele didn't like the, this Hatan in the first place. He told the daughter is not for you. Now you supply the ammunition that he was looking for. And who knows what's gonna what's gonna happen now? And the parents will take things to their own hands. They want to protect their child. Now, until you come up with a plan how to protect her, they already made up. They went to eat outside, in prime rib, prime cut. Shiraz. Shiraz. They're going here, there. And meantime, you and your husband eating yourself alive and they're having fun. They forgot already the whole world. So now they even, they even had ten minutes five times already. What what? They even had ten minutes five times already. <laughs> okay. And now the parents are still pumped up. And now they're gonna come and interfere in a place that nobody called them, nobody told them. And now they're going to poison the daughter. Or his parents will start to poison him. And is, do I have to tell you what's coming next? Do I have to tell you? No. Now, even if I come to the parents, I say, excuse me, it's not your place. Can you move aside, please? They'll move, but the impression that they get already, Kvar, this will never go away. The bad impression is still there. And now they're saying probably they're covering up. They don't want us to know who knows what's going on there. Their mind will not rest. A parent is a parent. And that's what's going to happen now. So, so, so what are we going to do? She needs to vent. The husband is not ready to listen. What are we going to do? Psychotherapy. Ma? 
She needs psychotherapy to someone to talk to. Neutral call, person. Call the Ralph. <laughs> Robert. So the therapist will tell her, if I were you, I will not stay there. And he might, he might be right if you're talking on the surface. So now you have to go to somebody to talk to, and even though it's Lashonara, but it's Lashonara for benefiting something. So that's where I'm coming into the picture. Your husband don't want to talk to you. So I'm becoming the victim. And now they pouring. Maybe she can hardly take a breath. It's coming, I see, like, you know, like a spring. And I have to sit quiet. I'm not saying even one word. Because I'm looking while she's talking, I'm looking, how can I fix the situation over here? So our job is to encourage her with all kinds of words and to judge the, the husband favorably because he did not mature enough. He doesn't know. Nobody taught him. which for a lady is very difficult. So now, let's try something else. Let's say the wife don't feel comfortable or the husband don't feel comfortable to come to talk. They don't feel comfortable. There are people like that. There are people who are very good to express themselves with writing. More than talking. When they talk, they become very emotional and they can lose themselves. When they see down and they write and when they see what they, when you put the feelings on the paper, so it's much easier to deal with and you can erase, you can restructure what you wrote So, when you're starting to write, Pitom, you feel that you're starting to empty out. The pen is going automatically, and you're writing and you're writing. While you're writing, you're reading what you, what you feel, and it's like you're talking to somebody. In this case, you're talking to the paper, but you're talking. It's coming out. Many times they write, they read it, and then they take it and they tear it to pieces and yalla. Or they have a diary. 
כדאי that she hides, and every time she writes, got this and that, and that. okay, good. At least it's a way to vent out. Don't leave it in the storage room. Stick it out. Now, what happened if you read what you wrote second time and third time? How do you feel? At much ease, not as upset, or in the or in the same emotion as you were when you were writing it, when you were feeling it or going through it. Right. It's possible that you're going to erase a few lines. For sure. Maybe you were too harsh. And, and you wrote it in a time when you were very emotional. And now when you're less emotional, you read it, you say, oh, that's too much. And that's what happened when you're talking to your spouse, when you're too much, you're saying things that is, you cannot take it back. At least here you can take it back. And sometimes we grew in a house that we weren't able even to express our feelings. Ima used to say, you're not allowed to talk like that. Okay. You don't have to feel like that. Or we feel we the Sadikim, the Torah says they're not allowed to get angry and you're not allowed to be jealous, you're not allowed to hate, and you're not allowed to hold grudge. So I have to put my feelings in there. Bury it. Bury it. Children of Holocaust survivors. When you said to your parents, I have a headache, they said, you don't even know what it is to suffer or to have a headache. We had no feelings at all. You know? Because who can compare to what they went through? Nobody. They couldn't, no one. They look at you like you were you off track. If you say you're hungry, they, they look at you, what do you mean? What do you mean you're hungry? <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, I can't wait. I'm hungry. What, you can't wait? Now, how, do you, how do you compare with a father that slept in the snow for three years and a mother that slept in a basement for three years with no food, yeah. freezing cold? You, as a child, you can, no one can imagine that. So that's already quite much too extreme of the extreme. This is the met extreme. But you grow up in a house that you cannot express your feelings. It's something very terrible for a child, it's something terrible. So now the right way to take care of them is to know that everything that has to do with emotions and feelings, you must express it. Enough with the swallowing. We don't like it. Rabbi, I have the opposite problem. I can't hold my emotions or feelings. They just come out. No. And then you're saying things that later on you're going to, to regret. 100%. No. So you have to know that you have to, you have, your tikkun in this world is to work on this, this character. You know, the Hazon Ish, 
maybe spoke 10 words a day. He was Kazer. So once they told him, Rebbe, why don't you talk? He says, yes, I know. I was sent to this world in order to work on the character that I have to open up, I have to talk. And he worked on himself to learn how to talk to people. Okay. Each one has his own, but if we know it, we connect to it, and the husband knows that you have a problem like this, and you're saying to him, you know, this is my problem, I know, I admit. Can you be patient a little bit with me? So the world is not going to cave down. We open about it. What's wrong to be open? You know, some parents, the, okay, they're coming from the old school and they don't want to talk to, to the kids, to teenagers eh, about intimacy, about this and that. Eh, about, okay. So where the child, you know, that already the, the hormones are changing and so on, where is he going to learn all this? Who is going to explain him what it means? What is this? Especially a, a girl. They're sending her to the chupa like she is going to get shechted now. She's going for Shita, she's going. Nobody prepared her emotionally to talk to her and say this what I, there is so much to say, so the child will be prepared. The emotions will be in place. So now, if one of the one of the couple will say, you know, after all, she will, she has to say it, but after all, it didn't mean to hurt me. I, I don't think so. Maybe I was too harsh. Because if I say that my husband who wants to help me intentionally, then we're in trouble. Then we be met we in trouble. It, it was a time, a, a sensitive time. I didn't choose the right time to talk to him. I accepted that, you know, to too harsh. I was too harsh. I didn't understand them right. You know, try to find ways to to be less upset. Usually when, when you're upset, you say you're doing it intentionally, you don't care for me. Things you're coming with all kind of blaming that most of it is not correct. Sometimes a wife, either she is afraid or she don't feel uh, comfortable to talk harsh to the husband. I see it. I said, bring your husband over here. We're going to talk in my office. He says, I cannot talk next to my husband because I'm afraid that he will get very offended. So how are we going to heal the problem? You have to open up, you have to say what's, 
what's bothering you so he will know and I will sit over here as a mediator. No, then, do you know how many times I got a call after they left my, 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 my office? Over here, he behaved very nicely. When they got into the car outside, he wanted to kill her. He said, you embarrassed me so much next to the rabbi. Who knows now what he's going to think about me? There are. Many of them are like that. So my advice will be, take your pen, buy a nice pen, a good one, and you start to write things. And you're writing a letter to your husband, or the husband writing to his wife. Both of them. Can you text? Can you text them? Ah. Huh? Can you use text messaging? No. Isn't that writing? No. When she see your handwriting, meaning she saying she saying he took the time, he sat down, he wrote it's personally is for me only. It, it he don't write to nobody. Texting you text the whole world. Got it. Thank you, Robert. So, write everything down, spill it out. Empty the storage room, empty it out. Write it down, write it down, and then go over it. And you have now to go over it one more time, one more time, one more time, to fix over here, to fix over there, this is too harsh, this is this. You're, go over, the, you're going over it by yourself or together? What, what? Before you give it, you give the paper in or you have to give the paper in? You go over with, with like with your wife or? No, 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 you go, you mean go, go over it yourself. Yes. Okay. Then when you have, a, when you think the finished product is okay, then you give it to, to her. I think, I think like in two, three days, you're not going to want to even give it. <laughs> Why? Because you will feel like the problem is solved. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not so fast. I guess it depends what, right? So now I'll tell you how to write, okay? Very important. And it's working. I want you to know that what I'm telling you now, it's working very well. First of all, when you start in the letter, even if you're upset, you start with praising. My dear husband, the love of my life. Exaggerate? Okay, the said I permit you. I know that you mean well. I know that you're not here to hurt me. I'm sure that you don't have intention to hurt me. For sure you meant well. You didn't think that you stepping on a very sensitive very sensitive button in my feelings. Or he writes to her, you didn't know that that's what I need. It's not your fault. Now you're starting to say what you want to say. A request. Here we go. I feel very hurt when they leave me outside and then don't want me to participate in family matters which are important. 
it gives me a feeling that I'm not worthy a trust. They don't trust me. And I feel that I'm not a part of the family. Very legitimate claim. Very legitimate. They didn't want to tell her that uh, sister-in-law getting engaged tonight, tonight. And that's what she felt, and she's right. Continue. It's hurting me when nobody is listening to me at the time that I'm hurt and I need, I have the need for somebody to, to share with me my pain. It gives me a feeling that I'm not important. And whatever I feel, nobody is relating to it. Nobody pay attention to me. Whatever I said until now, sounds legitimate, yes or no? Yes. Yes, Rabbi. Yes, Rabbi, yes. Yes, Rabbi. Legitimate, yes? Yes, and without her what you feel? That's what I feel. I feel lonely when I'm all alone at night by myself. It's late at night and I'm also scared to be alone, to be home alone, and you are not home. It's hurting me to feel that your work is more important than me and the children. I'm not coming to take it lightly. Your work is very important. But I will ask you to spare more time for me and for the kids. Very legitimate. Now, don't forget that you have to specify what you need and how to satisfy you. You say, I told you I'm not happy. How come you didn't make me happy? I don't know how to make you happy. Tell me what shall I do? Is that number three, Rav? Yeah. What if you have too many uh, requests? You have too many issues with your spouse. Okay. So, we, so we're going to go one by one? That all in one letter? That's a lot to take. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you should, you can write, the list is long. I don't want to tire you. But I'll try to write every time something else. Yeah, we can divide also to, to the important one, the less important one. Yes. Yes. So now, here we go. After he told her an hour before, or she found out from the cousin that there is engagement tonight, she would have to tell him this, or if she cannot talk to him, write it down. What? 
I would have want that you guys to find a way, even though you obey your parents, to include me also in what's happening and don't leave me in the dark with an, an anxiety because I don't know what to expect. Very legitimate. Very. Number two. I will be very happy if you're going to be able to listen with your full attention without cutting me off every time when you have a telephone that says, okay, let's pause it. I have to answer this phone. Legitimate? Legitimate? Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, very. Good. It will help me a lot. Now you're telling him what to do. It will help me a lot if we can go out by ourselves. No kids. So we can talk without any interruptions. And to keep this time only for ourselves. What else can she say? She's saying black and white. She's saying what's the problem and she's giving a solution to the problem. What's wrong with that? My question is, can it be done? If the husband is willing, I guess. Yes. <coughs> Again, if the husband is not willing, we have a much bigger problem. What's the problem? Does he want to stay and, and to build it? Oh, he wants to get out and get out of here. But Rabbi, not even that. Sometimes a person can say, yes, yes, I'll take care of it, just to shut the other person up, but then they'll just go back to their own ways. So what do you do then if the spouse is not willing to do it, but we'll just, you know, all about the talk. Okay. So again, and again, So you'll see that she is not getting off the tree. She's on his case. But then he'll complain that she's being a woodpecker. Yeah, then he's going to shut down and like be distant, I think. No? Go into the closet. What do you mean, you will? I was talking to you. I told you what to do. What else should I do in order to move you? You're always nagging me. How about that? If you get, that's all you get. <laughs> so what is your idea? Throw the ball to his court. Okay, so what do you want me to do? He wants you to just be quiet and stop nagging. And that will solve the problem? <laughs> Bravo. Thank you, yeah. Shiva. <laughs> yeah, that's what he thinks will solve the problem. Yeah. Barikala. Barikala. <laughs> you know, I don't have even a word to say what it is. First of all, it's so stupid. Like you could just press... How can you fix the problem by, by not fixing the problem? Rabbi, some husbands don't want to fix the problem. They just walk away from the game. From the... From the, from the problems just get up and walk away some right. I know like they go and rent apartment for themselves for a month or two they think the problem will resolve they don't want to listen or they're gonna they're leaving they say let's go I'll give you a get and they go straight to the rabbis to give a get 
I'll vote for it. Why? But uh, you think there is potential to work on it, you know, and to work together. But if one is not willing to get healed, what do you think will happen? Rabbi, what if they tell you this is all I can do and they compare it to money? Like they say, if I have $50 in my pocket and you ask me for a thousand, what do you expect? I only have $50 in my pocket. Don't ask me for a thousand. So then what do you say? Okay, so now you have to go and learn and you have to learn how to make a thousand. Rabbi, what if the uh, husband says to the wife that you're too sensitive about it, about the situation, like even about this engagement? Rav Chaim, the men don't think like this, what you're saying. I don't know. They're going to think they, they're, I don't know. Wow. And so we can't tell Chaim was on the lady's side. Okay, whatever you're saying, I'm just about to fall off my chair. Doesn't he know that, that the ladies are sensitive? They don't know. No, they Some don't boys know. don't know, unfortunately. Where the wife is demised or looked down to and not respected. But all the boys have problems, they don't know. All the boys have problems, all the girls have problems. I think we should be more sensitive to each other. If each one of us will have sensation, feelings, then I don't think we would have problems. They think the wife is too sensitive, she's overreacting. That's right. the, What's the big deal that you found out? The easiest book? way is to put the blame on somebody else. You're too sensitive, which is very good, actually. If that's what Hashem gave you, meaning that's what you need. He wants to run away from the responsibility. Are we going to let it happen? Some people, they're not going to let it happen. But so why did you get married for? They asked this question after the chuppah, Rabbi. <laughs> I know what's going on under the chuppah. You don't have to tell me, right? But the question is, why did they get married? To have kids. I think it's it's selfish reason. Right? You have kids, you don't have to get married. Not, e not even for the kids. <laughs> the next Some boys don't even want to have a kid. We know boys that they don't in want to. we say, in order to drink one cup of milk, I don't have to buy the cow. If a man don't have it's the normal understanding that it's a relationship between husband and the wife, you have to listen and talk and to create a relationship. They think we're the problem. That like after we got, had a kid, we changed, our personality changed. We're not the same person they married. Okay, okay. And they also not they, 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 the same one. No, they are. They're still the same. They act like a single man but married. But a woman changes. She has a child. She has responsibilities. So she changes. So that makes your job even more responsible. Right. But not the man. No, no. It makes the men job more responsible. You know, if I'll start to talk now, maybe I'll finish in the morning. <coughs> maybe. You know, we. Uh, <coughs> what you what you're saying is so. I don't even know even how to express it. So what your husband thinks, that you are mate, that you are cook, what you 
you machine that you just bring kids and that's it. How do you change your mentality, Rabbi? When that's you're so most in, what's going on with you? I don't understand. Right. That's what most men think, Rabbi. They don't know what they're thinking. Men don't think. Can I ask you a most, question, Rabbi? That's what the most uh, men think. Woman just to bring the kids and uh, meet his needs. That's all. I don't think that's true, Rabbi. Rabbi, uh, I think, uh, honestly, I have two questions for you. One is, one is when you say about the milk, I don't think a, a religious Jewish person can have a child without getting married, number one. And number two, uh, I think a husband thinks it's a partnership and he doesn't understand that he, you know, with obligation and what everything you're talking about, he may not understand all that has come to your class maybe, but he doesn't know, he thinks the partnership, like a partner, both people are responsible. So he has to go make a living and uh, learn Torah. And so she has some obligations to help him also, you know, uh, so that's probably what he thinks. And uh, so these are, you know, so I, I don't see, that's the problem I'm having, Rabbi. Okay. Uh, doctor? Yes. Okay. The third uh, problem being that not all, not all, um, who do you know? It's like any doctor. You want, you want a board certified doctor, you want a doctor. And not everybody's a doctor who calls himself a doctor. So the <laughs> uh, same thing here. Not everybody's Rabbi Chaimwa. Somebody calls himself a, a counselor. He said, go to counselor. Who is he anyway? You don't even know who he is. You have no idea. So why should you go to somebody you have no idea is a met or not? This is the problem. I have Ruta, I have Ruta in the morning. Doctor? Yes, Rabbi. Sorry if I'm asking this question. No, no, it's good. You know me already, right? Thank you, Rabbi. Okay. So, so listen to me. No man that coming under the chupa have a clue what to do. I agree to it. We all, we all have to learn. Agree to it? Yes. I agree, I agree, yeah. Good. If you have the willingness to learn, I'm not going to blame you for nothing. It takes time. We're on the way. We're on the right highway, but I have the willingness to change, to learn. Not necessarily even to change. Get some knowledge. Didn't we speak over here, Da Lifne Mi Ataomet? Yes, what does that mean? In every shul, you come in and you see a, a line. You have to know whom you're standing in front of. Who is it? Akadosh Baruch Hu. I have an idea. In every chupa, we have to put this line. The chatan. Da lifne mi omed. You have to know whom you're standing in front of. Get a smile off your face. Do you know whom you, you, you're dealing with? They don't know usually the Chatanim. Completely the opposite uh, of you. Completely. 180 degrees. What you like, she don't like. What you hate, she likes very much. Go deal with this now. Rabbi, I think every couple, um, after, right after the Chupa, they have to sign for continued education classes. Oh, After okay. one year, they should go and learn a little okay, bit. Okay, so, so that's... You know how, that's, how we get like a credit for the for the license? The same thing the Khatanim should, and the couple should take it. It should be direct. The rabbi it. should be on the top of it, maybe. Actually, that's what we, we, we're going to do on the name of my... Uh, and it should be mandated daughter. with the all couples. We're going to make a family center. Finally, that's what I wanted to do for years and years and years. Now I have the... Be'ezrat Hashem, Rabbi. I'll be your first customer, Rabbi. Okay. <laughs> Again, I want to relate to what the doctor said. With all... 
Why is it serious? Because when it comes to my office and we talk, we're learning. We're learning. He has a pen, he has papers, and he writes everything down. I didn't see yet a man coming to my office and writing things down. So that's why you show willingness to change. Yes, it takes time. But to the, the wife, I will say, you know, you have to be patient. He is he, on the way. He just got on the highway. He cannot get to LA in two minutes. But we on the highway. How long patient, Rabbi? Again, 20 years, 30 years? I can deal with every husband, every couple, if they're willing to learn. I have no problem with them. Even if they, I don't know what they are, weird and everything else, they're going to change. Very true, yeah. Because the patient I have, the stubbornness, ooh-wah. Ooh-wah. I don't give up. I don't give up. I don't know, but well, this world uh, giving up. But if I see a couple that they really want to advance, by all means, they have a good chance. But to start and to say it's her fault, it's your fault, my fault, your fault, I'll buy you a lunchbox and go back to where you belong in kindergarten. That's where you belong. So to all the husbands over here, I want to say, every wife that I know, every lady that I dealt with, if she didn't cry in my office, it was a surprise for me. My office is full of tears, full. Every inch over here is full with tears. And by the way, tears that Hashem don't like at all. Not at all. But okay. They are sensitive. A woman have different needs, different thoughts. She needs a husband. She needs to feel this husband. We don't understand this language. We have to admit, we don't understand it. What does she want from me? What does she want? What can I do already? Even if you sit just next to her and you listen to what you have to say, you are the hero of the town. You, you didn't do nothing, just sitting there like a dead a duck. And then, at least somebody helped me. Man can lose his mind with his, uh, I didn't do anything, I didn't accomplish nothing over here. You accomplished a lot. What? You calmed you, you, your wife down? What a mitzvah. Pewala. Ah. There's not even a scale that we can put it on. So now, the finish, the letter is what? To thank. Thank you for what you're doing for us, for the family, for me. And you throw there a compliment. Ladies, when they're too upset, they don't throw any compliment. They just throwing dirt at you and dirt at you. You say, you know what? 
If that's what you think about me, I don't want to hear that. And so, that's why you have to calm down. And then when you finish the letter, you give it to your husband. He says, when you have time, please, I want you to read it. I promise you, when you get into his car, the first thing you'll do, you're going to open this envelope. Every man will do it. He's going to open it like the IRS papers. Yes or no? <laughs> Every man will tell you over here, I'm going to open it. And as soon as I'm closing the door behind me, the key is what you wrote down. Okay. Now, even if you criticize, Shabbat, I will say where to draw a line. There are places that you're not supposed to get in. Bemotzei Shabbat, I will explain. Sometimes a lady, she is getting into territory that does not belong to her. This is only a man territory. Men also, there is a lady territory, you don't go there. Do you mean like when it comes to weight, for example, for a woman? <laughs> like if she's skinny or fat? <laughs> no. No. Example of my, of my event. Why don't you wake up for a tefillah? You're not the mashgiach of the yeshiva. Wait, you're saying do not say that to your husband? No. What about she's the trying to be... he wakes up early, but then he's very tired at night and you feel like, you know, he's waking up for shul, but five o'clock in the morning to learn and that one's beautiful, but then at night he's totally emotionally and physically not there. We'll get to it. This is a man obligation is not your obligation. Rabbi, what if she's trying to be encouraging? Not true. You just said you're here. Don't wake me up. He what? Said, <laughs> Rabbi, don't believe her. He just said you're here. He said you heard. No, you heard. I said Rabbi, you heard. Speaking to you. Don't wake me up. I didn't say don't wake me up. If I'll come to wake him up, I know only one way. Kushim. Father, Allah and Shalom, you cold water. Wake up us with cold water. With a red picture, exactly. That's a plastic. He had one from uh, a metal one, which is much colder. <laughs> so the wife doesn't, you shouldn't encourage the husband with this type of things? He didn't say encourage. He said it's a man's responsibility, obligation to get up and go. You do your stuff. You fix the house, you pray, you this. Leave him alone. Maximum that you can do, you can call me and I will twist it. There he is, you know. It's we live all in Arizona. <laughs> what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> I can call. So, Bahama, what if your husband asks you to wake him up in the morning? Are you allowed to do that? Yes. Okay. But how do you, how is it supposed to work if you want your husband to be a tzaddik and to be very learned and stuff? Like, don't, doesn't the wife have an obligation to push her husband a little bit? It's causing tension now. You're not the mashgiach of the yeshiva. You wanted a husband a tzaddik? Yeah, of course. So if you're going to leave him alone and you do what you're supposed to do, you will see that he, he is far away. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, and he will go accordingly. The more you push, the more he'll go back.
Okay, but if you want your husband to, let's say, learn a little more at home, so I shouldn't say anything then either? What do you know about what learning is? You're right, I don't know. I'm just... Hi, Rav, you just told us five minutes ago that we should tell the men that they should go to learn. I don't understand. <laughs> I didn't say it. Rabbi said. Yes, five minutes ago you said that the Rav was telling us that we should send, we should tell our husbands that you, we should, they should go to learn. Rabbi how to deal with by it. Encourage them. Um, should learn how to deal with you. I don't understand the wife. Rabbi said encourage them, but he said don't tell them why aren't you going to learn or why aren't you going to shul. You know, don't, don't give negativity, but do encourage. Let's say one day he went, you're going to start praising him and say, you know, you went, I felt so good. My day was totally different. And then, I want you to do it every day. Now, the commander is speaking now. This is not going to work. Men will not take it from you. You can say what you want for you, you. I need emotions, I need love, I need, uh, I don't know what I need, attention, I need this. I need what you need. I'll cook for you, I'll do this for you, I'll, I'll be nice, I'll do this. But I will not tell you how to serve Hashem, not my department. Wait, Rabbi, but what if you say to your husband, like, look, I really care about you, but I also really care about your spirituality. Is that not okay either? What do you mean? Would it not be okay for me to say to my husband, I care about your spirituality. I think it'd be nice if you learned it's a little. It's not your job. It's not my job to make sure he's a more spiritual person. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's my job. You'll be spiritual and you get your, your reward perfectly. He has a problem. We'll talk about it. I, I see that we have a lot to talk about. Oh. But the wife's, wife's future, like uh, Ulama Ba, depends on the husband's also. If she does what she needs to do and he is not following, she will go and he will stay out. You know what my husband always says? I want Olama Bar. So I'm going to be so nice to you so I can have Olama Bar. So he's building Olama Bar on my, on my back. <laughs> he's not the only one. We are all like that. That's a good understanding, you know? It's easy to live like that. I have a question regarding that, actually. When it comes to, let's say... You know how a husband and wife, once they're married, they're considered like one soul, one neshama? Yes. Okay, but when it comes to, let's say, the wife is doing more mitzvot, then does the husband get part in it? I don't understand how that works. Does he have his own account, or is he under her account, basically? He is obligated, and you're not. You're not obligated to learn Torah. He is. Thank you. We'll talk about it. What is your reserve and what is his obligations? We have to make some, we have to call for order. When everything will be in order, everybody will know what does he have to do. But I'm telling you off camera, when you see that your husband is not doing well, 
spiritually, you give me a call, I'll get on the line, and that's it. And we'll take it from there. Work for us. Yeah. Ah. Saying it worked for us. My wife gave the rabbi a call, the rabbi called me, and that's it. I'm calling every, everybody, right? They should come see us in the morning. You know, people are coming. Uh, I never thought I'll see them in the class. They're coming. Whoever's not coming is missing out. Oh, sure. We may go slow, but you're getting... All my kishkes coming out there. It's good for you. Rabbi, we don't need quantity. We need quality. Quality. Trying my, my best. Trying my best. We are not Chinese, Rabbi. Chinese is quantity. <laughs> Robert, when are you taking down my neighbor's sukkah? Okay, have a good no, night, everybody. Have a good night. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Rabbi, what time Saturday night? Mazal Tov. Mazal Tov. Mazal Tov. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Rabbi. Thank you so much. Mazal Tov. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you in the morning, guys. What time? What's the Shabbat Shalom? Nine o'clock. Thank you. I'll see you in the morning. Bye.